Before we got ahead of ourselves, I wanted to talk about some confounding examples in real life. Uh, so I'm just going to list like a ton of examples and I'm going to explain how they can be confounding in real life observational studies. So for example, um, let's take occupational factors as the first one. So, um, so for example, uh, if you are a firefighter, uh, let's say that, and we're trying to determine whether, um, whether being a firefighter causes you to die early or not because you're in dangerous situations, um, it's, a, it's a dangerous job. Perhaps a confounding factor could be uh, your physical fitness. So perhaps you would have only become a firefighter if you were physically fit. But obviously being physically fit means you are going to be less likely to die of something like a heart attack or stroke. So being physically fit is a confounder if we're trying to figure out if firefighting is a risk to your health. Okay, let's do another one. Uh, let's talk about clinical decisions. This is always a good one, clinical decisions. Um, um, so for example, uh, you are going to be giving someone a, yes, let's, very classically. So for example, you're going to be giving someone a medicine. Uh, this medicine will affect their treatment, their, their outcome of their disease. But perhaps a clinician, doctors only give medicine to people that are in more severe conditions, like we were talking about with a heart attack or stroke. In this case, uh, the severity of the disease uh, would be a confounding factor because it would be more likely doctors would give it to people with a uh, higher chance of being sick, and those higher chance of being sick people are more likely to have worse outcomes. Now, so we get this kind of like back door. Um, okay, another example. Um, let's take general lifestyle. Um, so lifestyle. Um, so for example, in the general lifestyle case, uh, one example could be, um, uh, Let's say physical fitness and longevity in this case. So physical fitness and longevity. So perhaps uh, something like smoking could be a, a great confounder here. Uh, smoking affects whether you're able to stay physically active because you might have respiratory problems you might not be able to. And smoking, of course, also affects your long-term longevity. Uh, so in this case, smoking is a confounding factor on physical fitness and longevity. So a very uh, good example of that. Um, let's go with... Um, genetic factors. So genetic factor. I'm less familiar with these sorts of things, but let me make a fool of myself uh, uh, with genetic factors. So for example, if you had a particular gene and you want to know whether this gene was related to cancer, but let's say the presence of another gene, so you've got gene X, the presence of gene Z means there's an increased risk of cancer, but there's also an increased uh, chance of having gene X. So in this case, uh, gene Z is the confounder. Um, let's do maybe one or two more. Um, let's see. Why don't we just talk about environmental factors? We'll, we'll just call this the last one. Uh, uh, sorry, this, this handwriting is terrible. Uh, factors. Okay, so environmental factors, um, uh, you know, this, this could either be like social environmental factors or actual environmental factors. Let's just choose social environmental factors. You know, perhaps you're, you're interested in seeing whether um, uh, the, uh, the, the, the language of choice, you know, your, your language of choice might, um, might uh, influence the uh, amount of money that you'll make. So the language that you natively spoke and whether that might influence the money that you'd actually make. Well, so obviously there, there's some environmental factors here. So if you speak a particular language, you're from a different country and different countries often have different uh, mean incomes. Um, so in this case, uh, the country you're in affects both your mean income and it affects your, uh, your language, your first language of choice. Um, so all of these are examples, sorry, sorry for making this so free form, but all these are examples of confounding. So these all happen in observational studies. So you're looking at some data. You didn't necessarily do a randomized experiment. You're looking at some data. In this case, you're looking at firefighter data. Um, and you are interested in learning whether firefighters have a higher risk of mortality or not. And you can't, you can't necessarily randomize uh, making people firefighters or not. It's a life choice. That would be a terrible randomization. And so what you do is you, you look at the study. Uh, you, you see all these firefighters. You see their association with uh, mortality. And what you need to do is you need to make sure that you have no confounding, no unmeasured confounding 
um, or else uh, association won't be equal to causation, uh, just as we discussed before. So these are all examples of confounders. Uh, and we'll go ahead and, and, now that you've seen a lot of examples, state the general rule for confounding next video.